Hey guys, welcome to the video. My name is Amanda. I'm a second year vet student and today's video is all about the courses that I took in my first year of vet school. So this is somewhat of a part three to this series. I've previously made two videos on my channel talking about courses or curriculum. One of them was about the courses that I used as prereqs when applying to vet school. So if you are a pre-vet student, I would definitely recommend checking that one out. And then I also made a video talking about the courses that I'm currently taking in my second year. And on that video, a lot of you guys were commenting saying that you have just been accepted into vet school or you're applying for next year and you were wondering what the courses were like in first year. So here we are. As always, a little disclaimer before I start the video, I am currently a student at the Ontario Veterinary College, so my experience Experience and my courses are based off of OVC's curriculum. But with that being said, this video probably more so than the second year one, I think will be similar across the board no matter what school you're looking at. First year is all about building a foundation and figuring out what's normal so you can dive deeper into disease processes. So because first year is about building a foundation, I feel like most first year programs are going to cover similar content because the foundation of vet med is very similar. So with that being said, if you want to keep up with my vet school journey and you want to see what it's like being a student vet, make sure you like this video and subscribe. I post new videos every Monday and next week is actually going to be a very exciting video. I may or may not be practicing for my very first surgery, so that's crazy. Okay, anyway, let's jump into the courses that I took in my first year of vet school. So in my first year, we took seven courses that were year-long courses, so they start in September and then our final exams are in April and that covers all the content that we've learned throughout the year. The first first three courses that I'm going to be talking about are courses that we actually continue as we go throughout the vet program. So these three courses, I'm currently in the second part of them in my second year of vet school and I talked about them in the last video. Starting with ClinMed 1. This was one of my favorite courses in first year because we get to learn a lot of hands-on skills that really make you feel like you're going to be a vet. First year in general is a lot of facts and a lot of basic in terms of your learning about what normal looks like. But with ClinMed, we start to learn how to do physical exams on different species. So it's really cool to be able to actually apply the knowledge and be able to work hands-on with the animals. So some of the goals of ClinMed 1 is to get students to become familiar familiar with common clinical parameters, clinical problem solving, and to be able to develop written and communication skills when dealing with clients and animals. Like I said, this course has a really big focus on animal handling, which was why it was one of my favorites in first year. This was also the course where I discovered my love of sheep. We got to work on our sheep handling skills, and let me tell you, I love sheep so much. Anyways, that's ClinMed, so we are currently in ClinMed 2 in second year, and we are just building on the skills that we learned in our first year. So that's the first course that I took in first year that I'm now taking in second year. Moving on to the second one and that is Health Management 1. So health management in first and second year is designed so that students can build a foundation in the basic tools that are required for health promotion and disease prevention. So health management in my first year actually was very similar to my undergrad degree, which was animal biology at the University of Guelph. So a lot of the things that I had learned about in my first year, like different animal production systems and housing environments for different species was covered in health management one. In health management one, we talked about small ruminants, dairy cattle, beef cattle, horses, as well as dogs and cats and covered their different life cycles as well as their different production parameters. So this course was kind of a nice review from my undergrad and I know a lot of people in undergrad took courses like anatomy and histology which I did not so I felt very out of my depth for those courses but health management was a nice course to kind of bring me back to my undergrad and it felt very comfortable for me. So I actually really enjoyed health management in first year and I'm currently enjoying it in second year as well. Okay and the third and final course that we took in first year that I'm currently taking in second year is Art of Veterinary Medicine. So if you guys watched my video talking about the courses that I'm taking in my second year, you will know that I actually did not really like AVM in first year, but I'm currently really liking it in second year. AVM is one of the courses where we have to do our client simulated interviews. And basically what a client simulated interview is, we get paired up with an actor from the community who acts as a client and us as student vets have to go in and basically walk through an appointment with this client. In first year, I hate 
hated this. I found it so nerve wracking. I had no idea what to talk about. I felt so out of my comfort zone, even though I had volunteered at clinics before and I had sat in on appointments and I had watched vets do this exact same thing. When I was the one having to talk to a client and get details about their animal's history, I felt it was so awkward and unnatural and basically one of the reasons why I didn't like AVM in first year. But I will say, I didn't realize how many skills that I built in first year that I carried with me into second year. We also had to do client simulated interviews in second year and these ones went a lot more smoothly. I just felt like they were a lot more natural and I think having gone through the awkwardness of the first year interviews, I gained a lot of skills and I kind of settled into my own routine and figured out how I want to go about appointments when I'm actually a vet and it made these second year interviews feel a lot more natural and I actually really enjoyed them and got a lot out of them. So if you are like me and you are going through your client simulated interviews for the first time and you did not enjoy them, don't worry, they get better every single time you do them. Some of the other topics that we covered in AVM, besides the client simulated interviews, was talking about wellness as a veterinarian. So we talked about financial wellness, social wellness, as well as professional wellness, and how it's important to set boundaries as a veterinarian so that you can have a healthy work-life balance going out into practice. I think these lessons are really crucial to have as a student vet, and I'm glad they were talked about in my first year of vet school. Okay, so now that we have talked about the three core courses that I took in first year that I have continued throughout the DVM program. Let's talk about the courses that we only took in first year. Some of them I'm glad we never have to take again. Some of them I actually really enjoyed. So starting with veterinary anatomy. Anatomy is one of those courses that I feel like you either love or you absolutely hate. And I was very lucky and I actually didn't mind anatomy. I don't think I loved it at all times. I really enjoyed studying for it, but I didn't love the dissections so much, mostly because we would get into the dissections and have no idea what we were doing. So that was tons of fun. But actually studying for anatomy, I really enjoyed because it is very memorization based. So that definitely falls in line with my study style. In anatomy, we were introduced to four different species. We were introduced to small animals, so we got to do a dog. We also got to do a rabbit, which I guess kind of fell under the small animal category as well. And then we got to look at a ruminant, so in our case it was a sheep. And then we also got to learn about the horse. So each of these different animals was broken down into different body systems, where we started at the head and worked all the way to the reproductive system. And within each of these body systems, we learned about the bones, muscles, nerves, and arteries. Looking back and thinking about anatomy, I honestly can't believe how much information they throw at us and how much we're expected to know because even though each different species is similar in some aspects, there are minor differences within each species. Like for example, horses don't have a gallbladder. So there was a lot of little details that we had to remember and little variations between each species that we had to keep in mind. With that being said, I am currently in the works of making anatomy study guides that I will hopefully be releasing before school starts next semester, which will be available for you guys to purchase and download if you need help studying for anatomy. Because like I said, I definitely found there was so much content in anatomy and I really wish I would have made study guides for myself because I think it would have made my life so much easier. But anyway, that was just a little bit of a shameless promo there. So keep an eye out for those anatomy study guides if you are going to be starting vet school in the fall. I get a lot of questions on how we were tested in anatomy me and I think it varies depending on the school but for us at OVC we had bell ringers but then we also had a written component or a written exam for anatomy. I actually really enjoyed the bell ringers although they were slightly stressful and basically how they worked if you've never done a bell ringer before is there was 60 stations laid out for us and at each different station there was a specimen or there was a set of muscles and basically at each different station we would have a piece of paper and it would ask us a specific question relating to the specimen that was in front of us. So for some cases it was as simple as identifying a muscle or a nerve but in other cases the questions were a little bit more complex and they would have let's say a nerve tagged and they would ask you questions about what the function of that nerve was or if that nerve happened to be severed what would happen to the body. I really enjoyed these questions well I don't want to say enjoyed but I liked these questions because they forced me to think deeper about how all the muscles nerves 
nerves and arteries were interconnected and how the body system worked as a whole. But with that being said, at each station, we only had, I think, two and a half minutes. Does that sound right? Yeah. No, a minute and a half. Yeah, I think a minute and a half at each station. So that meant you really had to know your stuff. There you have it. That is anatomy. Okay, moving on from a course that I didn't mind to a course that I really didn't like, and that was veterinary physiology and biochemistry. So this course described the physiological processes carried out by different tissues and organs and the regulatory function that affects tissues and organ function. Topics that were dealt with in this course included cellular and chemical constituents of blood, blood coagulation and hemostasis, the function of the immune system, resistance to infectious agents, and the principles of immunoprophylaxis, cardiac function, cardiovascular hemodynamics, blood pressure, peripheral and regional circulation of blood, the the lymphatic circulation, the functions of the digestive tract, lungs and kidney thermoregulation, and water, electrolyte, and acid-base balance. <laughs> So as you can see, physiology and biochem was a massive course, and this was the course that I found most overwhelming in my first year. The way that this course was broken down was kind of nice, and it was sectioned off into different sections. So for a couple months, we would talk about immunology, another couple months, we would talk about cardiology, and then another month, we would talk about acid-base balance. So it was sectioned off really nicely in that sense, but at the end of the day, it was so much material and it didn't all stay in my brain. Let's just say that. <laughs> Obviously, this course is super important because it basically talks about how animals' body systems work. And if we don't understand that, how are we supposed to treat them? I think there's more that I remember than I feel like I do because when we've talked about things this year that were touched in phys and biochem in first year, I do remember them. But when I had to sit down and write those midterms, different story. <laughs> Even if I didn't love how we got tested in this course. It was interesting and I liked learning about it. I just didn't love getting tested on it. So that was veterinary physiology and biochemistry. Let's move on to vet histology and general pathology. So this course was actually broken down into two different sections. From September to December, we talked about histology, and then from January to April, we talked about general and gross pathology. I was one of the people who had never taken histology in undergrad, so let me tell you, when I started histology, I had no idea what I was looking at. It was all pink and purple and everything looked the same. And if you have ever looked at histo before in your life, you know exactly what I'm talking about because what is that? But the reason why we learn about histology is so that we can learn about the microscopic organization of the tissues and organs of domestic animals in various physiological states. So like I said, once we learned about the general histology, we moved into general pathology and gross pathology. And this is where we got to highlight abnormal and normal histology and gross pathology and really understand how disease affects gross and micro anatomical structure and function of different organ systems. So I have very mixed feelings about this course. Like I said, histology was not my favorite, but I will say from the beginning of the year, looking at pink and purple images and literally just seeing pink and purple to the end of the semester in December when we wrote our final and being able to actually distinguish if a tissue sample was from the stomach or the small intestine was pretty cool. Gross pathology, on the other hand, was the part of the course that I actually really enjoyed. This part of the course gave us a chance to actually look at different tissues and different organs and figure out what the normal tissues looked like versus abnormal tissues. This part was really cool because it was very hands-on and we actually got to go into the postmortem room and see and feel what a diseased liver looked like versus what a healthy liver looked like. This part of the course, I feel like really solidified concepts in my head and actually getting to see those organ systems, whether they were healthy or whether they were diseased, really blended anatomy and physiology together in my head. This was a challenging course and we are doing a little bit of gross pathology in my second year as well. And let me tell you, it's very hard to just look at a tissue and figure out what biochemical processes are going on in that tissue to cause disease. It is a skill that definitely comes with practice, so hopefully that will get better as I go throughout vet school. Okay, we're back. My camera died. Moving on to our final course that I took in first year of vet school, and that is developmental biology. 
so developmental biology introduced us to concepts of veterinary embryology, genomics, and regenerative medicine. So this was a course that was really interesting to me, and I enjoyed learning about the genetic side of veterinary diseases and how that presents in a patient. It was also really cool to see the embryology side of things and to actually see how a dog becomes a dog through the developmental process. This was the only course for us in first year that was not a full year course. We actually started it in January and then we had our final exam for it in April. But other than that, all of our other courses were year long courses. This was another course where there was a lot of material thrown at us. So I'm kind of glad it was only a semester long course because I think if it was a year long, I would have gone a little crazy, I think. But all in all, I really did enjoy this course and I found the material super interesting. So there you guys have it. Those are the seven courses that I took in my first year of vet school. I think the biggest lesson that I got out of my first year and the thing that really stuck in my head was not the small little details that I learned in anatomy or physiology, but the overall big picture of how much information you really retain as a vet student. I remember starting vet school and thinking I knew absolutely nothing about vet med and then finishing my first year and still thinking I knew absolutely nothing about vet med. There's just so much content being thrown at you that it feels like you can't keep up and a lot of the times you really do feel like you're learning absolutely nothing. It wasn't until I took a step back and thought about my very first day of vet school and compared it to where I was after I finished my final exams and that's when it hit me how much I actually learned in my first year. Day to day it may not seem like you're learning a ton and it may seem like things are just going way over your head but it's crazy to think about how much knowledge about vet med I gained in one year of vet school. I am coming up to finishing my second year of vet school now and I can't even believe how much content is in my head right now. I mean right now I'm burnt out and I feel like I don't know anything but <laughs> taking a step back it is really crazy to see how much you actually retain going through the veterinary program. So with that being said if you guys want to see a video about the courses that I will be taking in my third year of vet school once I start I would be happy to film that video as well and I hope you guys learned a little bit about what it's like to be a first year vet student and some of the content that you are going to be learning. There you have it that is the courses that I took in my first year of vet school. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next one. Bye!